The first temple we're going to look at is called the Temple of Aphia, and it's in the town of Egana, Greece. And you can see that the entablature is mostly destroyed. We have we have these two bands of entablature, the, the flat horizontal bands over above the column, but the triangle pediment is completely gone. In fact, the sculptures in the triangular pediment are not even in Greece anymore. They're in Germany. And so in order to go there, in order to see them, we're going to have to go to Germany. So forget Greece for a second. And here we are in Germany, looking at the pediment sculptures from the Temple of Aphia. And you can see that here it is in the shape of a triangle. And now the triangular shape of a pediment presents some trouble to the um, sculptors because he's got to figure out how to make triangular or sh sculptures that fit into a triangle, got to make it look natural like it would happen ordinarily. And what does he do? He sort of, you can see this, he has the woman at the top, who is the goddess Athena, standing up, standing tall in the, the tip of the triangle. And then the figures get shorter and shorter and shorter. As the triangle gets more narrow, the figures are kneeling down, they're lying down, and then they're completely on the ground. And that's how they get, that's how they get shorter and shorter. And then we're, this, the one on top, the band on top where Athena is, is the, um, from the west pediment. So one side of the building. Then you go over to the other, the other side of the building, you're looking at the east pediment, and you can see that not much survives from the east pediment. So we've got both sides of the building, both of the sculptures from the pediments have been taken down from the pediments in Greece, and they're put into this museum in Germany. Now we're going to talk specifically about the two characters, we, and they're circled in blue. We've got this one character on the far right, um, who's laying down, and then on the other side of the temple, we've got this character on the far left who's also laying down. We're going to take a look at them individually and then we're going to compare them because we will see that the west pediment, the one on top, was done earlier and the one on the bottom, the east pediment, was done later. And you'll see that there's so much more naturalism starting to happen in Greece. Um, and this is evident on this one temple, that as time passes and they're working on the temple, their ideas about how to depict a human being are going to change. And that's very, very significant for our study of Greece. So here we are, and we're looking at that figure that was on the top right from the west pediment and he's lying down he was the the one that was done earlier of the two he's lying down and you can see that he has just been killed um he's got some kind of spear that's in his heart and he's dying and and would you, would you really know that he's dying probably not i mean he's perching himself up like he's happy and having a great time and his legs are still stiff and taut it's almost like he's taking a bow after doing a great dance performance he has his archaic smile which doesn't show that he's happy but shows that he's alive it still looks kind of weird but i would say that generally his body doesn't look like the body of a dying man. It's still strong. It is still powerful. It still has all of its strength. Whereas when you watch in t on TV and in movies, when people die, they, and of course, obviously movies and TV is not realistic, but you, you get the idea. They're actors trying to be realistic. They're actually showing their strength leaving their body. They're becoming weaker. They're losing the ability to do things um, because they're dying. That is not the case here. His muscles are completely taut and strong. And the way that he's able to hold his leg up like this is not what a dying man would able to, be, to do. And nor would the dying man be able to hold up his, his arm that's, that's angled in this way. So again, what is this? Basically a lying down Koros. What we saw about the Koros is there was interest in, in human muscles and interest in idealizing figures, but there wasn't, but they didn't really have real human emotions. Um, we can't, we wouldn't really know that this guy was dying except for the fact that he's impaled by a spear. So let's take a look at the other side of the building and we'll see something almost completely differently. So here we go. Looking up at the top, we've got the dying warrior on the east pediment. He's also dying, just like the guy on the west pediment, but how much more naturalistically he dies. You can see that 
he's also been impaled by some kind of a sphere spear but instead of holding himself up in a strong way he's starting to roll over with weakness and with exhaustion and tiredness from being killed um what else is going on in this one take a look as i grab my laser pointer so his head is pointing down he's looking down at the ground because he's he's starting to get inward turning and starting to turn towards the ground whereas the man on the other side is looking up and at us as if he's very proud of his dance performance um this man who's holding a shield his arm is limp and weak in his shield as if he does no longer has the strength to hold his arm properly in its shield and his shield is helping to hold him up because he no longer has the strength to do so um, we can see him making this sideways turn towards the ground and he um, he's got his arm strong pulling at that spear maybe if it, he pulls it out he'll be okay and then even you know my favorite thing about this sculpture is you see his his left leg is actually over the top of the pediment as if he's going to roll off and roll over as he dies he's going to roll forward that's what his body's doing he's going to roll forward into our space now remember the pediment was way 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 up like 20 or 30 feet up but the idea is that this is a real man who's really dying and as he dies and he's rolling forward he's going to roll off the pediment and into our space of course that's not really going to happen he's stone but that's the what the artist wants you to think that this is something real um granted he's not showing very much emotional content we haven't gotten there um in terms of his facial expression doesn't look like a man who's dying but what does look like a man who's dying is the body the body is reacting in the way of of a man that would die while his face he's still kind of smiling he's still um he, he doesn't have very clear facial expression his body is reacting in the same way and, and that's really the key point about about our lesson for to, for this week is the greeks become interested in what the actual human body does we saw this in greek vase painting and we saw it in now in sculpture and we saw it in the kouros that the greeks are now interested in what the human body is doing and how it is reacting to things in the vase it's what is the human musculature look like and how can we depict that naturalistically in the sculptures it is what is the human body doing when it is dying it's a much different interest in in um in the human experience which is really what the greek what the greeks are all about is they're about the human experience our last work for this week is right here the critios boy and i'll tell you we're not going to talk about him that much because i am to be perfectly honest really sick of the critios boy i have been studying the critios boy since i was 17 not by choice but because all of my teachers always wanted to talk about the critios boy and i just got tired of him so he is a sculpture found at the acropolis in athens and again he's about um about life size it's a depiction of a young male maybe um early 20s and he, he's depicted heroically nude um kind of soft but firm musculature um I, very idealistic and heroic nudity unfortunately he has no eyeballs as you can see he originally had eyeballs they were marble but they got taken out um but what you can see with Critios boy i mean compare him to the kuros um as compared to the kuros you know he's much more naturalistic he's much less geometric um we don't see a lot of that interest in geometric shapes and patterns and symmetry that we saw in metropolitan kuros or anavisos kuros which are depicted next to critios boy there's one more thing we were talking in the last image about the greeks are interested in depicting how human beings actually move and that we see here um we have seen so far with the kouros which you can see with metropolitan kouros and anavisos kouros that they just sort of thrust one leg forward but not actually the fluid soft movement of how the human body actually moves here we're starting very slowly to see that if you look at critios boy he's again got one foot forward 
but his his it shows that he's his weight is shifted that one hip his left hip is slightly higher than his right hip as if when he is moving forward the left the right hip he has to relax it a little bit and it relaxes down the left hip stiffens and stays up um, and, and is a little bit higher again it's very 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 slight but it has to do with what we were just talking about with the temple of Aphia at Egana that the Greeks are increasingly interested in how the human being moves and how the human being reacts to different situations. We will see it in emotions later. Right now, we're just seeing it in body movement. And we're seeing that, that in fact, the Greeks are, are wanting to make their sculptures not look geometric and patterned and symmetrical anymore.